Good morning and welcome to Missoula Real Estate Today. This is Denny Bedard. Missoula Real Estate Today is presented by Diane Beck of Windermere Real Estate. Along with her trusted partners, Diane provides complete service for your real estate transaction and brings us guests who provide useful information on industry-related topics and trends. And now, Missoula Real Estate Today on News Talk KGVO. As always, we appreciate you being with us on News Talk KGVO for Missoula Real Estate Today. And, of course, thank you to Diane Beck of Windermere Real Estate, as always, for bringing us the show. And our guest this week is Nissa Lease. Nissa is with First American Title Company in Missoula, a first-timer on Missoula Real Estate Today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I am so glad you were able to come in. Uh, How long have you been with First American Title, and and what led you to pursue the, the position that you have? Sure. So I have been with First American for about five years now. Uh, It's sort of interesting what brought me to the business development role. Uh, I have started and kind of done a handful of of jobs with First American Title. Started at the front desk. I was an escrow assistant. I was a junior escrow officer. And then I was an escrow officer. And I realized the more I moved into those roles, the less contact I actually had with our clients. Uh, So this opportunity to roll into a business development position was uh, really more what I was passionate about. It's it's connecting with our agents. It's connecting with our people. It's helping uh, inspire people and motivate people and grow our business, which is what I really love. So that's how I ended up in, in this spot. Now, was that a position with First American Title that existed or did your employers go, you know, this, this Nissa lease, uh, pretty good at, it uh, looks like potential to be a good recruiter. Did the position exist or did it kind of get created because of uh, your skill set? No, this has been a position that has been in place. Uh, We actually have had uh, one person doing this role for a handful of years with our our company, Kevin Bates. He's the other business development rep. So we now work as a team. So there are actually two of us here in Missoula, which is great. We do things really differently. We think about things differently. We have different skill sets. So the two of us together make a really great team uh, because we complement each other so well. So not a new role, but... A great role for both of us. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I, I interrupted you. You started explaining a little bit of uh, what business development entails, but uh, go into some more detail on that. What all? What all uh, do you do? We do a lot. I mean, it's you could look at it as a sales role, but really, what we like to do is partner with our agents in the community and try to help them. Um, either grow their business. We look at that. We do a lot of education for them. Hmm. I always feel like if you are educated on the industry and what you're doing, you're going to be able to speak more eloquently about what you're selling or or the industry as a whole. And that, in my, in my opinion, helps agents be a little bit more confident and successful, which in my in my experience, translates to more sales and more transactions for them. Um, when they can talk about the process really smoothly of what happens with escrow and title and mm-hmm. the different components of, of our industry, my industry, uh, I feel like they have a little more confidence to speak to their clients that way. So on, it's an odd role. but On the whole, do they embrace that or do you have to kind of nudge them into uh, accepting, you know, hey, we're, we're here to, to help teach you or or here's a learning tool? We actually find that agents are really excited about education. We put on classes every month. Uh, We have different topics. We ask different people to come in. Um, You know, obviously with COVID-19, we had our classes get uh, delayed and we're trying to move some into a virtual format, but we have people come in and speak. You know, we're, we're coordinating with the Missoula Organization of Realtors YPN group to have a class next week with an appraiser. So a residential appraiser is going to come in and provide them some information and education on the appraisal process. But we teach classes like a Title 101 class. I teach a new agent class every month that just really walks them through what escrow looks like, what the what the life of a file really is when you go under contract. So it seems that there really is information that they're wanting, and we just like to partner with them and provide that education to them um, and that's a lot of how I do my role. It's sort of my favorite part of our role, of my role. And and what is your uh, education background that enabled you to, to step into that? Oh, it's very applicable to title and escrow. It's um, uh, anthropology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it did give me a great insight into people, but really uh, this is Yeah, not... but those people are, you know, three million years old. That's your problem. <laughs> I know I studied medical and cultural anthropology, so okay. a little more applicable. All right, but, sorry. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> it is it is sort of an interesting role. There's there's not like a school that you can go and learn title and escrow. We really the people everyone in our office started not knowing much about or anything about title and escrow when they first had their jobs. Yeah. So th- this is something that we learned so much and and we're super fortunate. I mean, our our staff has so much experience behind it. Our title department manager, she's been with our company for 27 years. Um, our escrow department manager, I think she's rolling into year 17 with us. So we have these people that are now just so knowledgeable and, and really the knowledge and experience just comes from the years of, of doing the work and seeing the different transactions and that come through or the different situations that arise. Conducting business in the current coronavirus environment. I should tell everybody too, that this is Missoula Real Estate Today presented by Diane Beck of Windermere Real Estate and Nissa Lease uh, from First American Title is our guest. But Nissa, how have you been conducting business as such? You know, it's been a lot of adapting as we go. We have been taking, we started taking extra precautions of uh, sanitizing, wiping everything down. Everyone, everyone coming into the office got pre-screened. Um, and that worked for the first week or two. And then we quickly rolled into just having everybody do curbside closings. Right. Um, and that's been kind of an interesting process. I think we've been really fortunate that our clients have been so clients. Our clients are real estate agents. So let me preface that. Our clients have been really supportive and helpful in relaying to their clients, the buyers and sellers or refinancers in the world, Um They've been great about helping support us in that and helping to explain the process to clients that are coming in to sign. But it's funny. I mean, it's definitely not how we want to conduct conduct business. Sure. Normally, we have you know people come in the front door. They're greeted by Jennifer at the front desk, who's just amazing and stands up and chats with everybody and offers them a coffee or a soda or water or some of our snacks at the front desk. And they get to hang out in the lobby and watch HGTV with our little electric fireplace there. Man. Um, yeah. So we really like that experience. We want you to start when when you come in. We want you to feel at home and comfortable and relaxed. And so. It's sort of funny. We lose that and our, our, you know, we've got masks on. You can't see a smile or bring your documents out to you in the parking lot. It's, it's just a different experience for us right now. Where does a title company fit into the mix of the whole buying or selling of a, of a home transaction process? Sure. So we are involved before it goes under contract, really. Mm-hmm. We get a request from a listing agent. So we'll use Diane back here as this example. So yes, Diane, when she's met with a client and they're ready to put their property on the market, Diane reaches out to us and we send her a listing packet. So we do a preliminary search for her um, showing, you know, the deed, what uh, conditions and covenants or restrictions apply to that neighborhood. If there's a current loan on the property, we give her all that information um, but then we kind of sit back and we'll wait until the property goes under contract again. So then Diane now has a buyer on her property. That transaction then gets turned into us, that buy-sell agreement. And we start the process where we do a complete title search. So we look at everything that's recorded of public record against the property, as well as all of the individuals invo- involved on both sides of the property, buyer and seller. And we look at anything that could be a potential risk or lien on that property And then our escrow uh, department goes to work on alleviating any of those risks. So we want to make sure that when you buy your property, that you're getting a really, truly free and clear title and that we've eliminated those risks for you or clouds, as we call them, on title. So we do a lot in the background, yeah. basically. So so that, that's pretty standard. You know, you kind of answer the question about since we are on a real estate show, what's your relationship with the Diane Beck team at Windermere is? Mm-hmm. And I imagine that that's pretty much realtors in general, what you just described. Yes? Yes. We partner with so, I mean, Diane has been a longtime uh, agent that we've worked with, and we really appreciate her and enjoy working with her over the years. Um, but that's generally how we partner with with any of the agents in the community is we're there partnering with them to make sure their client has a smooth, seamless transaction. Yeah. Um, I always say if your transaction went really well and you get to the closing table and you're like, wow, that was great. You have a really excellent team behind you, um, your agent, your lender, the appraiser, the inspector and definitely the title company. We're kind of there as this this neutral third party to the <laughs> entire transaction and keeping timelines going. And Yeah. Nissa, what what are some of the common pitfalls? Is the only word I could could think of. What what red flags might you need to watch out for during a title transaction? 
there's all sorts of things that can come up as an exception on a title commitment. And I think to answer your question, I want to explain a little bit of the things that we look for Please, yeah. that people don't necessarily think about. So okay. um, say your seller decided they didn't want to pay their HOA dues. That HOA can't, that homeowners association can actually attach a lien to the property. Ooh. Um, exactly. And we don't want your buyer to have a lien on that property that belongs to the seller when they purchase. So that's something that could come up. Um, and we obviously make the seller then pay that out of proceeds to to release that lien from the public record. Um, one of the things that comes up that I think people don't realize that we look into until they have to experience it, but um, child support, that's something that actually can attach to the property. And it shows up on there that there's a child support judgment um, from a spouse to their ex-spouse. And we actually have to verify that, that the owner of that property is paid current on their child support payments. Um, in order to to remove that exception, which I'm sure you can imagine sometimes us reaching out to an ex-spouse is not the most comfortable thing, right, yeah. but that's what we get to do. So we look at all sorts of things that can come up um, and be a potential lien on the property. But we also look at the really simple things too of, you know, you just have a mortgage on the property. We make sure that that gets paid off. We get a, a payoff statement from the current mortgage servicer and then we pay the loan off through closing, but then we actually track and make sure that that lien is released from the public record in the time frame that those lenders have. Um, I think they have 90 days that they have to release that from the public record. We actually track that and make sure that they are held accountable to do to remove it. Um, so there's all sorts of things that we we look at on their um, judgments. Say if anybody had you know just a minor thing, go to collection bureau. Um, we actually, those attach to the property as well, and we have to remove those. So those are those are really common things that we see hmm. frequently. So uh, obviously there is some research time involved. I imagine a real common question, whether it's a buyer or a seller or a, <laughs> a real estate agent for that matter, even though they know. What What is uh, the, the typical length of time? I mean, what, what is the expectation for buyers and sellers to be able to complete the transaction pending pending the whole completion of a title research and process? You know, that's a great question. There are several things that play into effect. Um, really, the, one of the longest things, part of the process, is if there is a lender involved. It takes much more time to close on a transaction with a loan than it does to close a transaction with a cash buyer. Of course. Um, because there's not appraisals and inspections and all of those things that have to happen um, and underwriting through the, the lender. So... It sort of depends, I guess, is my answer. If it's a cash transaction, I say, you know, a couple weeks is is plenty of time. Um, if you're looking with a a mortgage, I think right now the, the always the safe bet is 45 days. I won't put words in any lender's mouth, though. So we won't hold you to that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and and of course, uh, it, it's it's so hard to tell anything right now under the situation we're living in. But we did have a, a couple of folks on. We had Miles uh, Link from Opportunity Bank of Montana and Rob Fleming from Mad Mortgage on a few weeks ago and alluded to the fact, you know, with the whole coronavirus situation, the, the pandemic, fac factor it in just in case. I mean, there, mm -hmm. there might be some circumstance that arises because of that that could uh, in, include a little extra delay. Absolutely. I really, you know, it's. I, I've had that question a handful of times sure. from agents that are looking for an answer for their, their seller or their buyer. And I give them the, well, this is what my normal answer is. However, we've seen this or we've had an issue where it seems like this has caused an additional delay. So it's right now is such an odd time uh, for us to, to say, you know, sure, it's you're guaranteed no delays. I think we've seen yeah. things where, you know, I had a, a, this is not a client with um, Missoula office, but I had a friend that I was talking to uh, refinancing her property in Bozeman that her um, rental property, she had a tenant that uh, exhibited symptoms of COVID-19. So they could, uh, no appraiser was comfortable going in. So they couldn't right. go in and appraise the property and that caused the delay. So that's just one example of where something might come up and, and cause a little delay. But there it, there has been situations because of COVID-19 that n never been uh, 
confident in quoting a yes, we are confident we will record at three o'clock today or whatever that is. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting time for sure. Yeah, and you'd like to think most people understand that. Missoula Real Estate Today is presented by Diane Beck of Windermere Real Estate. Our guest, Nissa Lease, first American title company here in Missoula. You started talking about this, I think, a little bit, Nissa, when you were going over some of the research you have to do, but protecting property rights um, to me sounds pretty complex. Is that is that accurate? And if so, what uh, what are some of the reasons why? I think it really is complex. Uh, and that's why, again, I know I talked about we like to provide education. Our niche of the industry is is very complex. And I could say, you know, you could be with our company for 20 years and you'll have something that comes up that you've never seen before. There are always situations that arise that are that are new and different. And yeah. um, it is really important, though. Um, we're such a weird part of we're insurance. I put that in quotes for those of you on the radio. Those are those are um, radio air quotes <laughs> over there that Nissa just provided. Thank you. So <laughs> when you're when you're purchasing your property, you get homeowners insurance and you're going to pay a monthly premium to protect your home. Mm -hmm. Title insurance is weird. We're not, we're not a monthly premium. You pay a one-time premium at the time of closing the seller um, per the Montana buy sell agreement. The sellers provide that premium. They pay for that premium. They provide that policy to the buyers. So it's an interesting thing because we are taking and insuring or issuing a policy on anything that could potentially be a problem on your property. But we're looking at past experiences. So your monthly health insurance, car insurance, homeowner's insurance, those things are protecting you against future things that may happen. We're assessing all of your risks and looking at things that happened in the past and making sure that you have the rights to your land. Um, It's, I know you had a, you had, Talk to me a little bit before in these questions right. about um, like the claims, like how we might protect you. And I think that rolls into to this topic. Um, in Montana, some of the most common things that we see for title claims are um, boundary issues and access to your property. And those are things that we protect too. You know, we have so many properties in Montana that are in rural land. Well, you might have easements that go across those, and we're interpreting easements that might be from 1950, uh, and and we're we're issuing you a policy that you have right to access your property via that easement. Um, And maybe the new neighbor is is mad about it, and they want to fight about it. So we're we're protecting you in that sense. So your title insurance, you can think about about that, um, but think about the cost that it might take to defend or litigate that. That's what your title insurance is covering you for. It's protecting you. It's it's paying for the defense of of that um, property or a boundary. If the fence, your neighbor's fence is a little bit over, right. you yeah. know, what's the value of that land for it being 10 feet over? I don't know. But what's the cost to defend that 10 feet? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, First American Title Company is a uh, pretty large company, but with a definite local uh, accent. And we'll, we'll get into that in a few minutes here. But um, you, you, you've got to have some credible... Uh, partners and associates to to get the deal done. Who do you who do you typically work with when it when it comes to issuing? Yeah, those policies? so since we're not a part of the First American National, right. we have a lot of flexibility in that. We we have six different underwriters that we partner with here in in Missoula. So that allows us to not only shop for a rate, we have flexibility in um, who we choose to work with on certain transactions. Um, who has the best reissue rate. So if somebody is selling within two or maybe three years, we can we can look at who has the best rate for that client. We are really, really able to shop and look, and we do on every single transaction that comes into our office. We have our title department looking at whatever is, is going to be the best fit for that property that has the best rate, um, the best, like I said, reissue credit, which is a whole other ball of wax. But um we really have flexibility in that. We get to shop. We and we have great relationships with all of the underwriters that we work with, which is awesome. And no pun intended, but um, rates are an interesting thing right now. I mean, it's just uh, we, we've had realtors and mortgage lenders on the on the show recently, and just that that low interest rate, which you can't you oh, can't mm-hmm. you know de- de- depend on as a hard and fast rule, but it has really uh, created a a, a pace. Oh, it? yeah. We've seen a, a lot of refinance transactions happening right now. Yes. Um, 
definitely seeing quite a quite a few in our office and I know across our our company footprint we are seeing a good chunk of refinances happening along with the market that seems to be honestly plugging along just fine yep despite despite coronavirus <laughs> we've, yeah. we've been staying steady yeah it will be interesting I'm looking forward to next uh, week's show too because um, Diane from Windermere likes to bring in one of uh, her co-workers, Brent Wahlberg, with uh, with Windermere Real Estate. Gotta love Brent. Do you, you don't, <laughs> yes. you don't Brent, then, then you know Brent is the Univac of Windermere. He's got the with with yeah. crunching the numbers. Oh, he's a numbers guy for sure. Oh yeah, and it will be interesting to see where we're at. You know, mid May or just a just a touch beyond mid May next week when we have him in here. So well, I'll be tuning in to listen to Brent. Then oh, too. thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> And uh, we also want to thank some of Diane Beck's marketing partners that helped bring you uh, Missoula Real Estate today. Rob Fleming with Man Mortgage, Miles Link of Opportunity Bank of Montana, and Carol Blodgett from MakeItMissoula.com. And our guest is Nissa Lease, First American Title Company. Uh, Nissa, let's go over some of the services offered at First American Title and a little bit about what's uh, involved with each of those. Uh, A few, we've got a few minutes here. Uh, Let's go ahead and start with title insurance. So, like I said, title insurance is this one-time premium prevent uh, protecting you from anything that may come up and cause an issue to your right of that property, your actual land rights. Um, very confusing for a lot of people, but also very important. And it's one of those things you never know you need until you need it. And mm-hmm. then you're very, very, very grateful that you have it. <laughs> um, escrow is our other part. And I always say... The escrow and title are are really different worlds. We work so closely together, um, but the title is there doing the research and um, really looking at anything that might be a risk. And then escrow is doing things to alleviate those, like requesting a payoff statement, as simple as that, something we do uh, dozens of times every day. (laughs) And uh, we have also an obligation in the escrow department, department to be the neutral third party to your transaction. So following every written instruction that we have in the buy-sell agreement, making sure everything is actually followed before we pay the seller. We don't just take the buyer's money and pay the seller. We make sure everything is is cleared and all the terms and conditions have been met and then we're actually recorded at the courthouse before any money transfers. So we're there as the neutral third party and we're there. So there's the protecting your property and there's the neutral third party. Let's get to 1031 exchanges. Save me some tax money. How about that? Oh, well, we are super fortunate. So we're actually a part. I I mentioned that we're not a part of First American right. National. We're part of Title Financial Corporation. And we I, ha- I call her the queen of 1031s. Um, we are super fortunate that we have uh, a gal named Shauna Romrell. She is uh, based out of Blackfoot, Idaho, where our corporate office is. Uh, she is amazing when it comes to 1031s. So 1031 exchange is if you have, say, just an investment property, I use an example of a rental property. Really. Sure. Yeah. So if you have a rental property and you want to sell that um, and you just take those proceeds in when you sell the property, you're going to be taxed on them. But with a 1031 exchange, you can take those proceeds. You never actually touch them as the owner of the property. The 1031 exchange agent holds those funds and then um, you can roll those into another property so you're not getting taxed on the proceeds from that sale. So Shauna is the absolute wizard and queen of those. Um, I'm always happy to give her name out. And there's certain, yeah. she comes, speaking of education, she comes up once a year and teaches a class on them. And it's always, I learn something every new, new every year. It's amazing. She's just so incredibly knowledgeable on that. Man, you got wizardry and royalty rolled into one there, uh, helping you out at First American Title Company. That, that's uh, that's pretty good. I never I never shy away from telling you that either. <laughs> um, First American Title is a a large company in the, in, in the industry, but let, let's get down to the the lo- local thing. What what do you what do you see as some of the advantages though to that? You you do really emphasize the local aspect of that, right? Yeah, I we so First American Title. We do have as one of our underwriters, very obviously, they're one of the six underwriters that we work with, um, but we partner with Old Republic and Commonwealth too. I mean, we have a, a pile of them. Yeah. Um, we just had an agreement that we get to use the First American name. Um, we are part of Title Financial Corporation, which I told you I really love to talk about this. We have been family owned for 115 years. This is our nice. 115th anniversary this year. Um, it's been under the Stufflebeam family that entire time. And they have weathered. I mean, if you think about all the things that you're, his, you said you're a history major. So here we go. If you think of all the things that happened in the last 115 years, 
our company has weathered all of those storms. Um, and we have such great leadership in our company uh, and they really do such a good job of making us all feel like family. There's, you know, three people above my boss and I'm comfortable talking with all of them. Yeah. And that's what's so awesome about not being part of the giant national corporate group. We are just truly a family business. Um, Blackfoot, Idaho, not the biggest town. Not sure if you've no. ever been there. Oh, sure. It's, you know, it's right by Idaho Falls and Pocatello yeah. <laughs> as, you're, as you're driving I-15. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I know. Where so that. that's where our corporate headquarters are. So definitely not big city corporate vibe. <laughs> um, and that translates into the way that we conduct business and that we treat our employees and that we treat our clients and their clients. And I love it. I love our company so much. It's truly the company culture that we have is why I am here and why I love my job so much. Yeah, and then that definitely shows, no doubt about it. Nissa Lease with First American Title Company, our guest this week on Missoula Real Estate Today, presented by Diane Beck of Windermere Real Estate. I like to ask all of my guests about a success story. Uh, any transaction you've been recently, or not, not necessarily recently, you've been involved in that, that you found especially rewarding? You know, it's funny being in my role as business development right. as opposed to being an escrow officer where I could say, oh man, I had this really tough file. There was a lot that we had to jump through to, to get that file closed. But it's, that's not where I see my successes anymore. Um, you know, one of the things that I find most re rewarding is I told you I teach new agent classes every yes. month. And for me, what I really love and what I find, you know, my moments of success in is seeing an agent that's just started and they're brand new and they, they're, they're so unsure of like, I don't know what I'm doing next. I have no idea what I do when I get a transaction. Um, and just seeing them grow and gain that confidence in their role and, you know, start to get their first few transactions and feel more comfortable in that. That's what I really like. I like seeing my clients succeed. Or maybe that's an agent that's been in the business for a long time and they want to start looking at commercial transact commercial real estate instead of residential and I they ask me for help and I can provide them some tools or whatever they need I see my success in when my clients are succeeding and so not a transaction but just a really rewarding part of my job observing them evolve that's the anthropologist in you that is correct <laughs> is hey anything I might have missed you you want to make sure we cover before we wrap it up today no I think we covered a lot of some pretty in-depth information. I mean, it's it's the tip of the iceberg when it comes to title sure. and escrow. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions for for clients. If people are ever unsure of what that process looks like, I'm always happy to to help. But I yeah. think we covered a lot today. Well, before contact info, let, let, let's get to your uh, your physical location where you are in Missoula, where the First American Title Office is. Sure. We are 1006 West Sussex Avenue. So we are the big old stucco building between Walgreens and the fairgrounds, right behind uh, Krispy Kreme, if you will. So mm -hmm. we get to smell fresh donuts every day. You described it as big old. It is a rather grand, impressive building over there. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, are you in the penthouse up on the top floor? Is that where your office is? I, yes, actually, I am upstairs, <laughs> but it's not by, it was where the only open seating was for me at the All time. Right. <laughs> All right, you're trying hard to be humble here. How about, uh, Contact information if somebody wants to get a hold of Nissa Lease or anybody at uh, First American Title Company and, and learn more about you. What's the best way to go about that? You can reach out to us. We're on Facebook and Instagram under First American Title Missoula because we do have other offices across Montana sure. and Idaho. You have to use the Missoula. Um, but First American Title Missoula on Facebook, Instagram. Our website is www.gofirstam, short for American, dot com. Um, our phone number here in town is 406-829-2540, and uh, you can reach me in any of those ways. Nissa Lease with First American Title Company on Missoula Real Estate Today. You did a great job. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. Thank you for listening to Missoula Real Estate Today. Contact Diane Beck with Windermere Real Estate. Email dianebeck at realtor.com or visit her website, homesinmissoula.com. That's homesinmissoula.com. We'll see you next time on Missoula Real Estate Today.